the Son of God. And so that's basically the context he's dealing with. But Jesus himself indicates that, like you said, that you don't believe that these people were truly believers, uh, or that one can believe and fall away, or one can be of the light and then go back to the darkness. Well, Jesus himself indicates clearly that people can believe for a time, and the parable of the sower indicates that, and Scripture explicitly says that, that they believe for a time and then fall away. And really there's no answer for 1 Corinthians 9, 27, where St. Paul himself, obviously we would both agree, he was a true believer, yeah, he, yeah. He, he says that he could become a reprobate and uses the same word that's used in 2 Timothy 3, 8 and in Romans 1, 28. And if you look at what Romans 1, 28 says, it's clearly someone who's not justified. Okay, And so he's saying he sh- could become this. So, I mean, he's clearly indicating that a believer, and then we have all kinds of other passages like Second Peter 2, 20 to 22, which says, quote, For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Now, you might say, he didn't really believe. Well, that doesn't work, because in the same chapter, he draws an analogy to the angels that sin. Okay, angels who were in the good favor of God. And then God cast them down into hell. And he also goes on to say, after uh, talking about how people, through the knowledge of the Savior, were um, had escaped from the pollutions of the world, he goes, like a sow or a pig who was washed and then returns to wallowing in the mire. So he uses the words of being washed and then returning again to the mire. So he's clearly indicating, through numerous usages there, that this is someone who has been washed, who has been justified, and could return. And then we see in the book of Hebrews uh, 6, Four to six. Quote, I was going to read that. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift, and were mar- made partakers of the Holy Ghost, and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away, to renew them again unto repentance, seeing that they crucify themselves the Son of God. In Hebrews ten, I'll just quote that, and then I'll let you respond. For if we sin willfully. After that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation. And one last point. Ephesians 5, it's not just talking about like one other Protestant tried to argue and um, something I heard. He tried to say that, well, Ephesians, not everyone who's in, you know, a church building, like a Protestant church building, is in the church itself. Well, Ephesians, again, I want to emphasize, 5 is talking about people who were light. So the sacred scripture is clearly indicating these are people who are justified and that they can be partakers with the people who are unjustified. So you can go ahead. Yeah, well, I, I take the partakers to mean, and there, there are a number of scriptures about that, and it says, uh, it says, don't do the things they do, but it doesn't say you'll actually be condemned along with them. Um, the uh, uh, you were mentioning what was it? Oh, the Hebrews thing that raises questions on both. Hebrews six raises questions on both sides of the aisle. It is impossible if, uh, if they were enlightened, they've tasted a heavenly gift. Okay, uh, if they shall fall away to remove, renew them again unto repentance. Now, this one would seem to indicate that a person could never be saved. They wouldn't be able to go back and be saved if they had, uh, you know, gained salvation and then lost it again. I mean, it, it's a difficult one to understand. It'd be just as easy to uh, take it to mean that somebody who had been as close as they could ever be, known everything, had all the revelation they could ever have, and have hardened their hearts finally, once and for all, uh, irrevocably against the truth, like Judas Iscariot, for example. Do you believe that Judas Iscariot was a Christian and then he fell, or was he never? I think he was never, because Jesus said he's the son of perdition. Uh, well, I, th- I would say that that's a debatable issue. Whether yeah, he, it, it I, is. I believe that people can be, of course, but whether he in particular was, that is a, a matter of debate. Okay, that's, yeah, I, mean, I don't think... He was an apostle, he was a, you know, all of that, but was he a Christian while being an apostle? That's the question, and it is. It's not clear whether he ever was. We know he didn't, I've heard people say that Judas Iscariot is in heaven. It's like, well, they must never have read the Bible. There are pretty much nobody in Scripture 
that uh, is singled out and identified as being condemned. Well, you said that this, the scripture doesn't indicate that these people can fall away, that, right? That's what you, Sorry? you said something to the effect that the Bible nowhere says that these were people who were, you know, justified and then unjustified, or indicating that possibility, right? I, I don't think it does, no, no. Well, what about Romans 11, where it talks about how, let me just get the exact quote, it talks about how, you know, you were grafted in, the Gentiles were grafted in, uh, okay, and that, let me just find it here, uh, sorry. Yeah, don't be haughty, but fear. You know, uh, lest you be brought, if the God didn't spare the natural branches, he won't right. spare you either. Unless you continue in goodness, yeah. you also will be cut off, he says. And so he's clearly indicating to the believers that they, here it is, Romans eleven twenty to 22, well, because of unbelief they were broken off. Be not high minded, but fear, for if God spare not the natural branches, take heed lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and the severity of God on them which fell severity, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. Now, that's one of those ones that makes you, that gives you pause. And here's one, uh, I'm assuming, I, you didn't uh, interrupt before when I was talking, but I'm assuming you're not a Calvinist, right? I mean, Correct. I'm yeah, not. I mean, it would be pretty hard to be, you know. And I mean, <clears throat> well, you could say you're not a Calvinist because that's not the teaching of the Church, but it's probably your own personal conviction, too. I mean, if you didn't know the Church and you read the Scripture, you'd probably come to that conclusion as well, that, that God really does extend salvation and everybody has the, uh, the option of receiving it or not. Uh, probably, I'm assuming you'd believe that. But there is a verse in Scripture that Calvinists don't even use that much, which is pretty strong, and it makes you go, hmm, it makes you wonder how that could be, but we just don't understand everything. And the one you're citing about Romans, about the being broken off, is one of those ones where I go, hmm. Listen to this one from uh, Matthew 11. Uh, and now Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. So it makes it sound as if God just said, okay, I, re I will not, I'm not willing to save Sodom. I, I could have saved them by doing mighty works, but I just decided, I just reprobated them, as the Calvinists would say, to hell the whole lot, whereas he went and saved all of Nineveh, Nineveh through the preaching of Jonah. That one, Matthew 11:23, gives me pause, but in light of, you know, God extending the offer of salvation to everybody so many times in Scripture and commanding all men to repent, he wouldn't command someone to do something that's not possible, like sin, for example, when he says, be perfect, be holy, the Holy Spirit, I believe, enables every believer to avoid all sin. You know, there's never a sin that you have to commit. Uh, it's just people don't appropriate that often enough. But uh, so, yeah, that's one of those verses in Romans that makes me gives me pause. But there are so many others that makes it sound that when a person is really translate transferred from d uh, death into life, uh, and you know, they follow the shepherd, they won't follow uh, a hireling, but they follow the shepherd. They know his voice. I give unto them life, and they will never perish. I, I can't help but see uh, so many scriptures there where I can't come to any other conclusion. Um, let me look up some more here. Go ahead. Well, in regard to Matthew eleven twenty three, that doesn't clearly indicate, it doesn't indicate at all that salvation is by faith alone or no, eternal no, security. Just, I'm just saying it's a it's a an issue that gives you pause to think about what the other side is saying. Because I want to say that um, there are a lot of things, and I don't mean this uh, in any offense at all, when we get to, on other times when we get to these other issues, which I hope we do, uh, because they're more, I don't know, they're clearer, I think, that 